morning again. We're in the heart of the new forest once more on another gorgeous, beautiful, blue, not a cloud in the sky morning. Um, and we're off to Sammy Miller's museum again. This time, the theme is uh, vintage Japanese motorcycles and just Japanese motorcycles. And this time, the special guest will be Alan Milliard. So. Uh, Join with me for a little trip down through some of the forest roads and we'll go and see Mr. Miller and Mr. Milliard. We'll see you soon. Alternative belief, sorry, that's the word I was looking for. The colours out here at the moment. And uh, the other thing is, is cream teas and ice cream. And of course, uh, there will be a lot of uh, four legged friends uh, to have a look at. So, um, very, very popular little village. Uh, there used to be a cycling pub here, you know, where you can hire a bike and get around the big forest. No good for me, got no engines in them. Uh, the back 18 is uh, 
over a different position on the pin and it is tough going you've really got to be on the greens and then of course the other obstacles um, are horses and the other thing is is uh, what horses um, expel uh, you can come across that I don't know what the local rules are about moving horse manure but uh, I can't remember what that was but I do remember it is a very challenging little course So over yeah, there somewhere? Yeah, there. yeah, okay. Um, Thank you. 
coming out there. He's a fabulous May Evan will help me start on his own. I didn't get that much time. So. <laughs> Yeah. 
Certainly a big turnout already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well that's that's a fact, right? Nigel's going to have a few words of introduction and then we we'll have a bit of action. We're going to run up the um, Allen's latest creation, the six-cylinder Kawasaki. We'll have the detail of that. Charlie Boardman's uh, Parry Dakar bike and Andrew's Super Sprint Job. We're still trying to work out how they come. Both of them are number 173. Um, don't know how that ever happened. This is Parry Dakar, that's a sprint bike, but not the same numbers. So, anyway, here's an item to say a few introduction words. We love technology, don't we? Yes, indeed. Thank you, Sammy. Um, yeah, I just basically repeating what I just said over there in the corner, but first of all for the VGMC members before I forget, 
those of our members would just even visit the fantastic museum here for a tenor. So that's very generous of uh, Sammy and the team to offer that today as well. But a big, big thank you to you all. This event wouldn't happen for the sixth year now in a row. This has exceeded all, really, our expectations. We thought it'd be busy, but this is now, I think we're up to about 103 motorbikes, Japanese classics, which is the biggest by far we've had uh, over the six years. Weather's been a factor sometimes, but we've been very, very lucky indeed. So a great thank you to Sammy, the team, and everybody putting it together, plus the BGMC as well. But most importantly, all of you guys, we wouldn't have an event otherwise, so thank you for that. Thanks to Alan and Andrew bringing these two wonderful bikes along, but it's very different in some ways, certainly from the sound factor, and I think Andrew's going to reward us with an amazing amount of sound, so if your earplugs, if you wear them, you may want them handy. <laughs> okay, we'll be hearing the windows rattling, it's going to be very exciting, so Andrew will get that going, Alan will be running his, and Alan will be here also to support uh, technical questions and such like as well. So thank you, Alan, for, for coming along, it's fantastic, yeah, brilliant. Um, Basically enjoy yourselves. Just finally, as I said over there, it's very difficult for you to hear me on that particular speaker. I do accept that and uh, I'm going to try and talk Sammy into buying a bigger speaker for next year. So there you go. Spend a bit of money, Sammy. Thank you. Are you joking? So, um, the shields will be presented around about one o'clock. So if you can bear with us, I know it's hot. We just got to give everybody that chance to arrive. Everybody had a good look around and then the judging will be done around about half twelve, twenty past twelve. Roughly about an hour from now. Not an easy job. Uh, there's four of us from VHMC who will be judging. Very, very difficult indeed. My original judge, uh, unfortunately, has fallen ill, but we're very, very happy and proud to be doing that, and it's going to make our, it's going to be very, very hard indeed. So, no further ado, uh, what we have on first, Sammy, is it uh, Andrew going to run his bike up? Andrew's going to Okay, Andrew, are you happy to move the bike a bit further towards us? He, Andrew has warned us he's worried about the windows of, of the courtyard because there's so much noise in this thing that they won't take an eye. So he will run another, and then of course Anne will be um, Anne will be here as well to answer your questions. Enjoy yourselves. Thanks very much. Um, Japanese Day. Well, this is the latest purchase to the museum. Um, F49 2000 uh, MV, uh, wonderful bit of equipment, but this is the way the museum is moving forward. The older bikes are getting less people know of them, and so we thought we would have um, a more modern bike. I know it's now over 30 years old, but what a wonderful bit of gear. We've had it running this week, runs a treat, not for me, I'm afraid. I don't like holding on to the front wheel spindle any longer. I prefer it sit up and beg. A bit like uh, Charlie Boardman's uh, Paris Dakar bike. We were. Um... We'll wait till Andrew finishes and then we'll carry on. No, we're not ready yet. Charlie Boardman, he was going to be here today, but unfortunately couldn't make it. So I look at this thing here with total amazement. Um, you wouldn't really want to get that stuck in a bog in the Scott trial because you'd be, it would be there forever. It would just sink into the um, thing. But what a, what a, I can't believe anybody riding that in the desert really. To me, the, if I was doing the Paris Dakar, I'd be going the way I did years ago when you go from the big aerial, big heavy board of a bike to a little lightweight. Because surely when you're blasting across sand dunes and so forth, uh, you don't want a big, big, heavy bike. You want something nimble and easy. So, and Andrew's going to tell me how he ended up with 173, the same number as Charlie Boardman's bike. So, there must be some reason why you've got 173 on your bike. So, perhaps you can tell us a few details about this. Over to you, Andrew. Thank you very much. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, yeah, the 173 is basically just the race number I was issued by the. Um, National Sprint Association for the class that I'm in, which is uh, 750 Racing, which essentially is anything goes. All we're concerned with is how fast we can get it to the end of the strip uh, from the green light. And that's, that's basically it. This bike itself is a complete one-off. Um, it's supercharged using a Rotex supercharger blower, uh, and it runs 10 PSI at uh, around about 10,000 RPM. 
S augmented by um, around 35 to 40 horsepower of nitrous oxide on top of that. And we're so. So, what does that cost you then? Uh, well, are you, you going to tell us how much it costs this nitro job? Well, this arm's shorter than the other one, so you know, part of an arm and a leg. <laughs> it's, um, nitrous, depending on where you get it, is around about 15 pounds a pound, and I'll go to about five pounds of it in a weekend. So, it's expensive. But the bike, you know, the, the performance it gives is just so incredible that you, once you've ridden with it, you don't want to ride without it, because it feels flat and horrible. Really. When you look at Boardman's bike behind you and you look at this, all these controls and the dashboard, how on earth do you keep all, when you're doing 150 mile an hour, down, how could you bloody keep your eye on all this lot and what's happening down the road? Right, well essentially, I mean, I've got several buttons here which I click on on the start line, and then the only thing I'm keeping an eye on after that is the shift well, line. Well, you're going. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 like, this is obviously lower down, because this is just a show. But I'm looking through the screen there, trying to keep as aerodynamic as possible. And the shift light is on the uh, red counter there. Yeah. And that's all I'll see is the flash red, change gear, flash red, change gear. You've got the blood light on, what's that, blood 8,000 RPM? Uh, just just under 9, that's, just, that's the RPM that I launch at. All you ladies know what the blood line is, don't you? It's a big red line, and if you go over that, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, no, 9,000 RPM is what I launch at, and 10,500 is the gear shift. Yeah. That's when I change gear. So, hopefully, <laughs> if it works. Okay, shall we have some noise, please? Right, here we go. Ignition, lift off. One, two, three, we are lifting. It's a Kawasaki Z1B 1975, it's two extra cylinders. So I've got one cylinder on this side, one cylinder on that side from a different engine. 
but other than that, it's all pretty much standard. I built this in 2020 during lockdown when we're all stuck at home. And um, well, there it is. Uh, last question: Have you got any questions about the bike? And I'll, I'll answer them. If not, it's just under 1600 cc. It contains all the original features. It's got the original carburetors. Um, it's got four brands in electronic ignition. Done 3,300. 15 miles now since I made it. We drive around two up quite a lot, it's really comfortable. Goes really well, the torque is incredible. How do you manage about the balance factor when you nail these extra cylinders on these bikes? How, how do you manage to overcome all that? Yeah. Balance factor is, is six single cylinder engines, so each cylinder has got its own balance factor. So if I add in two extra parts, it makes no difference. The balance factor in each cylinder? Yeah, 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 yeah. and it's a six cylinder 120 degree crank. Press up roller bearing. The, cam, the interesting thing with people who love is the camshafts, so I cut them all up with an iron grinder. You watch the YouTube video in the garden on the grass and just weld them back together. And I got them within one thousandth of an inch. Do you want a job? <laughs> <laughs> we can do with a look like you in our workshop, you know? And the speed you turn out stuff is phenomenal. Um, it, it's, I get a bit annoyed when people take about three and four years to do projects, you know. Um, and I like people who, like the great Bob Collier, he made all sorts of specials. But they all worked, and he got them all done. And lots of projects are always sidelined, and they never sort of get finished. But Alan's the, the finisher. Yeah, what you do is don't get bogged down. When I made the B12 Kawasaki back in 1999, couldn't work it out to do the crankshaft, so I didn't worry about that. I just made the rest of the whole bike, finished it, took it to snap a show, one best in the show. Then some people found out it didn't have a crankshaft in it, and there was a right hoodoo going on. <laughs> so I came back, I funneled in here, did a burnout, and set off the fire alarm. And, went right, so, and it just came to one night, it was the middle of the night, suddenly burnt out, I do it, not knife and fork, connecting was like on an aeroplane. But don't get bogged down, just keep going. And one word you cannot use in his workshop, and in here, you cannot use the word cannot. You cannot use cannots, right? You remember that. So the next time you've got a project and you get to grind your standstill, you, there's no word as cannot do it, right? So, absolutely wonderful. Um, so what are you working on at prison? I'm doing a lot of work with Henry Cole, which is sloping down a little bit at home. But we're, great. we're doing some interesting projects for the Mayweather Show, which I can't talk much about. It starts on the 12th of June. But it's been really interesting this year. I was reading the programme for the Banbury run last night and I noticed young Milliard is riding a friggin um, a dreadnought. And I'll tell you what, it's got a good name, the dreadnought. Dreadnought, look at it, you know. Tell me about it, because I don't know how you, you're braver than I. I actually know nothing about the bike. I saw it in the car catalog picture yesterday, I showed Tracy, and I don't know, it's like a homemade thing someone's made in 1902. And the engine's got no clutch, and it's got a trembler coil ignition, and it just sort of just about runs and you have to push it a little bit, don't you? I'll find out about it on the day. The last Pioneer run I did was on, with, with a bike that had no clutch, was the Norton Miracle from the Beauty Museum, and this is where you've got to push up and leap on board and off you go. So every set of track lights you come to, if you stall it, you've got to do another push start. Well, luckily in Grand Prix, I was pretty handy at push starting because it was clear you got good starts in Grand Prix. So, but when I got to Brighton, I think it was up to over 20 push starts. The last one was running on my knees, it was worn out. So never again. So um, good luck. I'm riding the experimental AGS in line four. None of his new AGS would be in a four cylinder in line, but it's in the museum. Prototype, they only made two of them. And uh, so that's a lovely bike to ride and um, good for people to see uh, what AGS has did in line four, 1928-29. So um, when Britain was at, at the forefront of design and development and um, engineering. so. Uh, looking forward to the Pioneer Run, and um, so what other projects have you got on with it, Henry? Well, we're working on some, there's obviously the project bike, the bike show, which was really, really good, and we've got another very special bike we're working on as well, but we can't really sort of say really, we have to wait until oh, it's in June. The 007 stuff, so 
We're working on a few special bikes in the workshop, so anybody who likes to come in um, or run through what we're working on. And um, Alan, um, so what's, um, are you doing Goodwood this year? Yeah, we're doing the festival speed. We're doing for the most part show filming, and then we're doing probably doing revival as well. I've been invited, so I might say the time we're going to race in the revival. We're not sure yet, I've been told. But it, it'll be something from the, from the National Work Bike Museum. You're careful, boy, because if you're racing at um, the revival meeting, you, well, you need pink or blue knee slippers on, you know, when you're flying around one of the corners, you know. I, I haven't done the, uh, I'm doing the festival speed, but the revival is um, a bit too hectic for me now, you know, so you get all the Grand Prix men then and, and uh, serious, serious uh, speeds and competition, but. I'm doing the revival, we're taking the Gilera, four cylinder Gilera 1957, and I'm riding the BMW Ren Sport because that's a lovely bike to ride. Yeah, you go well on that, see you that, show me the And uh, Stuart Graham's trying to convince me to, to bring the AGS Porcupine, which has won the first world championship 1959 with his father on board. And um, it was quite interesting, he wrote it last year, and um, the rumours were that this was an evil bike to ride, but when Stuart ran, ride it, he said, Dad had a lovely bike to ride, and really it handles exceptionally well, so um, the myth that it was hard to ride was only fictitious. I, I think with Revival for me, I'll, I'll go there for my last ride my bike on the track. Can I take the flying mill yard around the track? Can I take the flying mill yard around the track as a demo? Not just this day, if I can get it to demo, I'll definitely come, I might not go this year. That's another bike. Uh, uh, what CC is it again? 3,000 CC? 5,000 CC. 5,000 CC. Got it wrong. Anyway, hope you've all enjoyed the little chat show. Workshop's open. If you want to come in, come in. We'll have a run through what's happening. Are you coming in, Alan? Yeah, I'll come in, yeah. Right, see ya. Come in the workshop.